Electric toothbrush. Technical analysis. Disassembly. Many of you will be aware of the electric toothbrushes and the disposable electric toothbrush like this is quite common. You know that if you press the battery the head will vibrate and it will allow your teeth to be cleaned a lot better. But have you ever wondered what goes on inside beyond just putting a battery on the end? You do know that on some units if you twist them you can take the end off and there's room to put a battery inside. Some of them twist off and the end comes off quite easily. Others the end is actually sealed on with a little screw. Some units like these don't vibrate at the head but they have other gimmicks in there and inside there are electrics inside which actually encourage in this case a child to brush their teeth and the little electronic circuit inside is sealed inside and counts down 30 seconds giving you a green an amber and a red and allowing the child to brush their teeth for the required amount of time. To take this toothbrush apart we're going to need some simple tools like this pair of pliers, some very small uh, screwdrivers and some bits of card or in my case a little bit of brass strip but you could cut a little bit of plastic from an old uh, bottle or something like that with a pair of scissors. We're going to take this one apart and this has a, a little vibrating head at the top and a little fixed head and the batteries sit inside and there's some sort of motor and switch gear. Before you start have a think about how you think the motor operates the head and how you think everything works inside and then start to take it apart. You need to start by taking the, the little screw out of the end. Notice how the screw is not particularly rusty and that's because it's stainless. You may need to use a screwdriver just to help the end off and you can pull that off. And again you notice that around the end here there's a little rubber elastic band type seal which again you can prise off and you can remove because we're putting the thing into individual units. I could take the little battery springs that are inside out, I could probably pull them out with a pair of pliers, but I'm not going to do that. But there's my base section with the screw, the seal and the base unit. Inside, in here, you will see, and you may not see on this film particularly well, but you will see the uh, motor and the gearbox and the other bits of plastic are inside. There are some really tricky little clamps in there that you need to try and get out and that's what you'll need these for. These, if you poke a screwdriver down here, you can pull the clamp away like that and then you can force that behind it and that stops the little pincers on the motor from allowing out. The motor unit will then slide out the end. So here's a motor unit I've already re removed and you can see that when the motor unit's in there like that you do actually need uh, a little bit of card or a little bit of plastic like that on either side to allow those parts to actually slide out of the unit and that will then allow that to slide out. So that brings the whole motor unit out. So we can now put our motor unit in place there. Inside there is now completely empty except for the rubber covering for the switch. We then need to turn our attention to the head here. If you look carefully at the head, you will see here there's a little metal pin. And that little metal pin, you can see the metal on this side here, you can push that little metal pin out with a very small uh, screwdriver. So if you push on this end and push it slightly, it will push out the other side. And then if you grab hold of that with a pair of pliers or uh, put it in a vise and you pull gently, you can see the pin is starting to come out of the, the head. And if you take that pin out completely, you then have a pin. That then allows you to take the hood away. So that you can pull the whole unit away. You can see that the centre unit, the blue brushes, is actually the bit that the pin goes through. So the pin goes through that and holds that uh, centrally in the unit 
you can see it's got some old toothpaste uh, stuck inside the body so we'll just sweep that away but the pin actually goes through the head of the unit like that I just push that back in a little bit it then goes through the base of that and through that hole and this bit's got a little pivot in just to catch this little uh, piece on there okay. so that's holding that in now that's actually holding this down because that's got a little plastic piece and that when you put that through there that won't pull all the way through so that's stopping that coming all the way through so it's actually this bit that is then able to rotate so if you I hold it the blue bit with the pair of pliers you should be able to see the white bit revolving as I twist it so what's happening is the motor is actually turning this little pivot here and this little pivot here is actually having the motor operate it by in a left and a right manner like that. So it's actually operating it by going left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. And that's what's making the brush appear to rotate or oscillate or move. And that's all that's happening. The motor is doing that in a very, very fast manner, which makes that work like that. So we can now put those units as part of our head unit down on our table. So we've got our head. We've got our uh, actual rotating part, we've got our pin, which I'll just take out of the head and put there, and then we've got the head itself. These bristles are fixed in, and they're fixed into this plastic cover here, which if I uh, put a screwdriver behind here, it may well break the glue, but these are just glued on. Oh no, they're not, they're just pop popped on, and if you prise them off they will actually come off so they're also a sub assembly okay which just prizes on so they clip onto under here they clip onto this little lip here don't know whether you can see that on the film and so these if I just remove some of the toothpaste which has obviously got clogged up underneath okay this has got a little groove in there which actually clips on. So there's our head that's going to sit, sorry, that way round. So they're the bristles. Right. And then we've got in here, you can see a little bit more toothpaste, which obviously clogs the system up. But notice that there's no rust. The little metal items inside are still quite nice and bright and shiny. There's a little access bit down here, and there's a little access bit here, and in there, you can see that's where the metal so we're now going to pull that little bit of metal out so I've got a very small pair of pliers which I'm just going to pull a tiny little C shape out you can see our little C shape on the end of my finger there so that little C shape is next there so we'll just move we're going to put that there and then I'm going to very carefully not allow that to come out but that, I think that will actually go down the tube so what we're going to do is we're just going to push the axle down the thing and let the whole axle assembly come out so there's our axle assembly and on the end you can see there's a little seal and that little rubber seal is stopping any water that obviously goes on the head when you put it in your mouth and goes down the spout and sometimes comes out of these drain holes at the back it stops that stops the water from getting to the electrics and the mechanism inside. On the end of the shaft you can just about see there's a little stamping on the end which allows it to give it a slight location. It's a little bit like a screwdriver location and that will drop into the little plastic bit that's on the end of here so that it actually locates and if I turn that now that's quite positively located onto the battery here and that's what's making the battery turn and that will just pull out so again we've got our little seal we've got our little drive shaft notice that the end of the drive shaft has got a tiny little crank in so that where's it going to focus from can you just see that that actually cranks around so that moves from left to right from left to right to left to right so that's going to give our little bit of operation on here that's going to move that left and right and left and right and left and right depending as that's turning.
So that's all that's happening is that spinning at high speed and turning that left and right, left and right. And it's held in place by this tiny little C-shaped bearing. When we look at the motor itself, the motor itself is obviously soldered on. You could desolder those soldering irons, or in this case, because I'm not planning to use it again, I can either break them or I can cut them. This metal piece here is the bit that carries the switch. There is no real switch in here, it's just a metal contact that closes and opens. But the switch itself is quite clever. The switch has got two parts to it. One has been deliberately crimped so it's slightly shorter than the other and it's made from sprung steel. So in its natural state the spring springs upwards. When you push on the end the spring section clicks and you can hear the click and that forces this top end down to make contact onto the other metal. So when that corresponds to our buttons in our body you're pushing the on button, that's when you're actually pushing this on button here and you're pushing on that end section there and that closes the switch. When you want to stop it, you push the other bit and that pushes further back. So on pushes at this end here, like that, and off pushes a little bit further in and just pushes on this centre switch here and that makes the switch spring back open. There's no real moving parts, it's just that spring that operates. The connections at the end are soldered on here, but they are just pushed into the plastic. Now that pushing into the plastic does mean that we can reasonably easily remove the metal, and that means that the, uh, the plastic, in theory, could be more easily uh, recycled because we can actually remove the non-plastic materials. The motor is then held in by these clips on either side, and if we just put a screwdriver in the side of here, and we lift slightly, the motor will release itself from both sides. And the motor will then come out like that. Okay, I'm going to actually cut these through so I can get it out. Right, so I'm just going to cut through the connections there. I'm going to cut that one off. Give it a slight wiggle, put it to one side, and I'm just going to cut through that blue wire like James Bond always does. And that will then allow the motor to push out properly and to come out completely. It also means we probably won't be able to get this unit back in one piece and working. So then the motor should just lift out and leave us with the carcass. The rest of the units, you can see we've already removed that. We could actually cut the plastic off there quite easily and remove the plastic switch. And if I just open the switch, uh, this end is also probably just pushed in. And if I put a screwdriver underneath that carefully, I'll probably find that with a little bit of force, I can take the other half of the switch out as well. So there's the other half of the switch. So we've got our motor connection at one end, we've got our motor that sits in the middle like that, and then we've got our connection and our switch, and that's actually just burned over in situ. So it'd be quite easy to slice through that with a knife and extract that, and that would then be a single piece of plastic. It's a reasonably flexible piece of plastic, so it's not going to be acrylic, it will need to be something like PVC, so it's got a little bit of give in it, uh, and it's got a little bit of give on the motor so it can grip the motor uh, and the colour is irrelevant, it's never seen. So that's our motor carriage. So we've got our motor carriage and our motor, we've got our switch components and our battery connections and then we've got our head. So if we put that in order, we're actually going to have something that looks A little bit like that and then if we put our body here and hopefully we've got enough space to put our armature at the top we've got our little uh, extra brush which sits around the head and then we've got our rotating head and our little locking brush head and of course our pin that goes in our head of our body 
and our little tiny um, sort of check rotation bearing and our seal that cut stops the motor. So the seal actually sits on the top of here. So that's what actually seals against it. That actually sits on there like that and seals that unit and stops and that's what holds that into the top of the body so that water can't get down and on it. Right. Once you've disassembled something like that, you then need to look at how it's made. The main body is almost certainly injection moulded. It's quite a complicated shape and other than this uh, sort of fabric or screen printed shape on the outside, it's all one material but this little bit of rubber would make that very difficult to, to actually uh, reprocess because that's sort of glued in and that would have to be completely removed to be able to recycle the piece of plastic. Plastic is most likely something like ABS, it's quite hard, it's quite rigid, it's quite brightly coloured, it's reasonable uh, shock proof so it's probably not something like acrylic. Likewise the battery base case is made from the same plastic and is also an injection moulding. This piece is almost certainly another injection moulding but as we've already said it's something a little more flexible like PVC. We've also got another little tiny injection moulding on the top of the motor which is just a force fit onto the motor shaft and has got just a little funny shape on the end that accepts that and that's almost certain something like nylon uh, and again would be either um, a compression casting or probably again a very simple uh, injection moulding. The motor itself we could actually disassemble, we could take the head off and look at how the motor's uh, made but that's a different uh, ball game completely. We've obviously got some uh, very elastic type materials like rubber or neoprene or something like that. These are probably are both neoprene well used for seals and waterproof. And then we've also got things like the, uh, the screw and the shaft and the little axle which haven't gone rusty at all so indicate they're probably made from stainless steel. You obviously wouldn't want rusty bits of metal appearing in your toothbrush. Similarly, the little pin in the head is probably stainless steel. The brushes themselves are probably almost nylon and they will be injection moulded into these pieces of plastic and they will be buried for life in there. Reprocessing and recycling little bits of plastic like that are virtually impossible in the current climate because we can't separate those two pieces of plastic. You can't really use nylon for the bottom because it's probably not strong enough and often not waterproof enough, it slightly absorbs water and certainly wouldn't take the shock of movement being travelled through it in the oscillation way that these little fine pins on the end of these do. What you would be expected to do is to draw the individual components. You would draw them in such a way that you could see them so that they looked uh, like the way they would come out of the machinery. So you can see I've laid them out in the sort of logical way uh, I've obviously made them fit the camera as you would need to make them fit the paper. You can see how the pin lines up with the head and with the piece that's holding that down. And you would look at each piece and draw an overall view a little bit like what you can see on the screen. You would then take each piece and draw each piece quite carefully and annotate it. You would decide whether you were going to draw an orthographic or an isometric view of each piece and you would label and annotate it with the materials you think it's made from. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what powers your electric toothbrushes. In this case, quite a chunky motor, but if you look at one of my other videos, you'll also see they sometimes use very tiny little motors similar to the ones that you get in mobile phones.